we have to simplify. So what I like to do is I treat each little part separately. So I'm going to do the cos squared negative x. So let's have a look at that. Cos squared of negative x. Now that square confuses a lot of you guys. I know that. Um, so let me show you a nice way to do this. What you can do is you can rather say cos of negative x and then put that whole thing inside a 2 or inside a square. Now forget about the square and just pretend that the only thing you need to look at is this. So if we look on our cost diagram, we know that we've got 180 minus x, 180 plus x, and 360 minus x. There is no minus x. So what we do is we add 360 degrees. So then what we're going to have is the following. So we add 360 like that. And then when you plus, the order doesn't matter. So that's going to actually be cos of 360 minus x like that. And then that's squared. Now, 360 minus x is on the cost diagram, so we can say that that's going to be cos x, and cos is positive there. And then we remember that there's a little square, and so it's simply going to become cos squared x. All right, the next one is cos squared of 90 plus x. So I would put the 2 on the outside like that. And then I need to realize that this is a co-function. Now, a co-function of cos 90 plus x, that's the weird one that always gives us negative sin x. Okay, you need to just memorize that. If you really cannot remember, then you can use the grade 12 compound formulas if you want. Um, these ones over here, I'll show it to you now. So if you really cannot remember your co-functions, then you could just use the cos um, a plus b formula, and then you could expand it, and you will get to negative sin x. So that's pretty cool. You couldn't do that last year in grade 11, of course, because we didn't know the compound formulas. But now in grade 12, you can if you have to. And so remember to put the 2. Now, this is where some students get it a little bit wrong. If you take minus sin x and you square it, it's going to give you positive sin squared x because a negative and a negative would make a positive. So that part over there is going to become sin squared x. And then this part over here, I don't know what happened here. I think we said this is going to become, oh yes, cos squared x. And then the next part is this one over here. So that's going to be cos of 180 plus 2x. So it's a 180 plus. So that's this one here. So we good. So we know that the answer will just be cos 2x. But cos is negative in that quadrant. So we'll put a little negative in the front. And then the last one is this one over here. So we can say sin squared of 90 plus x. Then remember, we can write that as sin. And then in brackets, 90 plus x. And then a big bracket to remember or to remind ourselves that it's square. Now using co-functions, this just becomes cos x, and then that's still inside the big bracket, and so it's going to become cos squared x. So now we can proceed to go and write everything. So it would be uh, cos squared x plus sin squared x minus, and then this is also a negative, so that's going to be two negatives next to each other, over um, oh no, we said that that's going to become cos squared x. Cos squared x. All right, so what we end up with then is cos squared x plus sin squared x. And then this will obviously turn into a plus. There we go. And then cos squared x. Okay, now from grade 11, we should identify that this part here is always going to be equal to 1. So well done if you got that. So that's going to be 1 plus cos 2x over cos squared x. Now you should identify this cos 2x over here. That's something new for grade 12. And so that's a double angle. So let's get our formula sheet. And so remember guys, our original goal for this question is to simplify. So my advice when you're trying to simplify is you want to make it Simple, of course. You want to make it less busy. You want less terms. So what's a bit confusing is for cos 2x, we've got three options. And it does matter which one you're going to choose for this type of question. So to make less terms, you must look at this one over here. And you must try get rid of that one. So I can get rid of that one by being clever about this. And I choose this option. Let me show you why. 
because if I say 1 plus, then I'm going to change this one now for this one, and that's going to be 2 cos squared x minus 1. So look at what happens here, guys. See that? So that's what you that's what we mean when we say simplify, get rid of terms. If you went and chose this one or this one, you would have made more terms. You wouldn't have made less terms. And so those ones are going to cancel. And so you're simply going to be left with this. Oh, would you look at that? The cos squares are going to cancel. And so we actually end up with a beautiful answer of 2.